but let me just ask you about this power series. It was on the front of our quiz that we just did. Summation negative 1 to the n times n plus 1 over 2 to the n times x plus 1 to the power n. If we want to know what the interval of convergence of this power series is using the ratio test, let's just watch it emerge. ends up wagging its tail. So how far, whoa, this thing is freaking out. Not exactly sure what's going on there. Um, but at least we can see from the graph, um, how far up does it look like the interval of convergence goes? So this vertical asymptote here, x equals 1. And then there's another vertical asymptote over here. I mean, it looks like it's kind of blowing up. Yeah, negative, two. negative two. As it turns out, it's a little further. Oh, that's right. So the interval of convergence for this power series ended up being from x equals negative three to x equals positive one. Again, one consistency check on that is that whatever you get, your center point ought to be smack in the middle of that interval. And what was the center point of this power series? x equals negative 1. So if one of your endpoints is x equals 1, which is a distance of 2 away, then your other endpoint had better also be a distance of 2 away, which in this example puts us at negative 3. And did you find that the endpoints converged or diverged? I got that they diverge at both endpoints. Let's take a look at the series real quick, just to convince ourselves why that's true. The series general term was negative 1 to the n times n plus 1 over 2 to the n times x plus 1 to the nth power. Sum n equals 0 to infinity. So when I plug negative 3 in here for x, this factor, negative 3 plus 1, becomes negative 2 to the power n. And when negative 2 to the power n multiplies negative 1 to the n in the front, it becomes positive 2 to the n. And that positive 2 to the n cancels my 2 to the n downstairs. So when all of that dust settles, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. And so at this particular endpoint, here's our series. Summation of n plus 1 and running from 0 to infinity. How do I know that diverges? Yeah, the terms, a n equals n plus 1, as n goes to infinity, these terms blow up to infinity. When what are they supposed to do? In order for this series to have a chance at converging, what do the terms have to do? Terms have to go to 0. And since I think we can agree that infinity is not equal to 0, um, this diverges by the terms test. After all, what is this? This is just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7. No way that's going to add up to something finite. At the other end point, what happens? Same thing except with an alternating sign. So instead of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so forth, uh, we end up with 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 and so on. But the same issue. Yeah, the alternating sign doesn't matter to whether the terms go to zero or not. If the terms don't go to zero, then neither does their alternating version. <coughs> so either way, we can determine whether the terms go to zero just by looking at the terms' absolute values. So if the terms' absolute values don't go to uh, zero, then the terms themselves don't go to zero, and that's by the non-degeneracy of the absolute value norm. Take that one to the bank. <laughs>